Peace TV, the solution for humanity. It says that life's the greatest test. It says that life's a borrowed space. We turn upon rest. A way of life away. In Alhamdulillah, in Ahmaduhu, wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'kfiru. Wa na'unzu billahi min shuruli anfusina wa sayyati a'malina. Man yahdihillahu falamudillala wa man yutlil falahadiyala. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. Wa ba'du. Fellow brother and sister in Islam. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. May Allah's blessing and peace and mercy be upon us all. Amin. Now, Alhamdulillah, today we are going to get into a topic about happy marriage. Now, when you talk about marriage, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remind us in one of the ayah, أَعُنْزُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنْفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجَ لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمَ وَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً إن في ذلك لا آيات لقوم يتفكرون. In Surah Al-Rum, Allah said, and with the sign of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, the Creator, He created for within ourselves a mate, a partner, a wife, so that we will find happiness and tranquility within ourselves. And this is the sign for those who reflect. Now Allah is telling us, it is so important to understand the nature of our creation. That Allah creates pairs, everything that is a pair. That means Allah wants us to be together. Now, even the Prophet ﷺ have reminded us, An-nikah min sunnati, faman raghiba an sunnati, falaysa minni. Nikah is one of my way, my teaching. Whoever go against nikah or anti marriage, he is not one of my ummah anymore. So nikah is something very natural. Everyone is an is a a thing that been done by everybody before the religion exists. Everybody know that they need a family. Nikah means is a person that who are prepared to sacrifice his own lifestyle or her own lifestyle and get into a situation that they are sharing all their life together. They are no more as an individual, or just a man or a woman, but both of them are going to merge together and become a family. Now the reason that Allah want us to go through a proper marriage. A halal marriage to make sure that we have righteous offspring. It is very important because all that we see today is because of the relation between a man and a woman. Whether you do it in the halal way or haram way, then you experience offspring, children coming out, and we hope the nation will grow because of it. It is very important to make sure that the institution of marriage. It's healthy so that it will develop a healthy society. Again, the Prophet Sallallahu is telling us the most important thing in a happy marriage is both party must understand the rights and their duties. If both party, the male, the husband, know his right and also his duty as a husband, and the wife know her right and her responsibility as a wife. There will be peace, harmony, love, and happy family. Insha'Allah. I will start by giving example. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's the best example. He is a man of God. Allah has chosen him to be His messenger, and in the same time, he is a very successful businessman. He never lie. He never cheat while doing business, and he is a very successful husband. He married. He is the messenger, and he also get married, and he is the best example for all fathers. That he is a very successful husband, and the prophet said, "Khairukum man khairukum li ahli, wa anna khairukum li ahli." 
The best among you are the person who is kind and loving to his family, to your own wife, your children. Because welfare begins at home. Don't show your kindness outside and you forget to show your kindness to your immediate family, the wife, yeah, the children that you have with you. So Islam always begins from inside before you go outside. So the Prophet said, the best among you are those who are best to his family, the wife and the children. Because I, the Prophet said, am very kind and very good to my own family. So this is the value in marriage. Now, without understanding the reason you want to get married, the purpose of marriage, then it's not easy to achieve happiness. Your happiness do not just come like this, but you got to work for it. Yeah? Everybody must know what is their responsibility, their duty, and their right, then you are sure to have a happy marriage. Now, fellow brothers and sisters in Islam, why Islam emphasize the importance of a man and a woman legally marriage to develop a very healthy family lifestyle and also a healthy society. Because if you do not marry in the Islamic way, in the way that Allah wants you to get married, you just have free sex example, everything go free, then all the AIDS, the disease also come very freely. So everything is free. So what is going to happen to the coming generation when they see that their family yeah, is so yeah, unhappy? There is no family value. So that's why the Prophet ﷺ reminds us about this hadith that I have said early, Qairukum man Qairukum li ahli wa ana Qairukum li ahli. He's going to show you his best example. When you talk about family, you talk about children, because what the Prophet loved his Ummah to get married because he want his Ummah to have a lot of children so that he have more followers in the Day of Judgment. Now this is good, but there is no good nurse if you have a lot of children but you cannot take care of them. You cannot bring them up as a righteous children. Now what is important, now we try to ask ourselves. Now I want to get married. So you must know the do and don't who you can marry, who you can marry. There are people you cannot get married even you love them. This is something that you must learn. Yeah? It's written in the book of Fiqh, the book of Hadith, talk about what, how can you get married and who uh, you can get married. And in the same time, the Prophet said, if you want to marry somebody, the Prophet said, you can look at four things. You can look at her beauty, her wealth, and her lineage her family background. And also, the last one is the Prophet said, you look at his or her religion. And the Prophet recommend us highly, value her religion. Don't value her beauty or her wealth or lineage because this will change easily. But if you put the value into the religion, then the religion will develop happiness because Value of religion always lasts longer than other things. The beauty of a person won't last long. The property of us also is not going to be there for us every time. That's why Ali used to say, if you have a lot of money, you got to take care of the money. But if you have knowledge, knowledge will take care of you. So this is very important. Muslim always value knowledge and value the character of a person the religious background of a person more than their beauty, their wealth, or their lineage. This is very important. Not say that you cannot have beauty, beautiful wife, you can, no problem. But not just focus on that. The beauty always comes from the religion, from inside, from the heart. When you talk about heart, you talk about spiritual thing, you talk about belief, you talk about religion. Then after when you want to get married, that's why you see in the earliest the beginning of marriage, Allah had put a condition through His Prophet Sallallahu that no marriage can be conducted without, number one, wali. La nikah illa bi wali. Meaning, Allah is teaching every children to honor the right of the parent, especially the father. You want to get married with one girl, 
you must seek the permission from her father. This is a very healthy sign and healthy society if everybody knows how to respect the elders. Today you have hardly people respect the elders and the Prophet Sonson did mention Laysa minna man lam yuwakkir kabirana wa lam yarham sagirana You are not one of us if you don't know how to show respect to the elders. Everybody must learn how to show respect to their father. So all the girls remember when you get married, don't forget that you got to get the consent from your father or whoever yeah, from your father lineage because that is what the Prophet command us so that your marriage will be blessed insha'Allah. Yeah? Don't do things by yourself. Do it in the way that Allah and the Prophet want us to do so that we will have a fair, happy marriage, insha'Allah. Now, after doing that, I'm just going to remind the husband. Now, happiness of the family rely on the man more than the woman. Because the woman, by nature, they are very obedient. They are very faithful to their husband. Yeah, by nature. But the man is the one who always create a lot of problem yeah, at home because they want to show their authority. There is been a man we know, you know, we are not going to deny that we have the ego in us. I am the boss. The boss is always right. This is what we say, not what Allah said. Now you must remember that a woman, once she got married, she is prepared to sacrifice everything for the husband. That is nature of the woman. But we are different. We have our own nature. But what is important, you must remember, if you want your wife to respect you and listen and obey you, you must remember what happened in the time of the Prophet. There was a man who came and complained to the Prophet that his wife is lousy. His wife is very disobedient. Keep on complaining. So the Prophet Wasallam said to this man, do you obey Allah and the Prophet? He just keep quiet. If you want your wife to obey you, first you must learn how to obey Allah and the Prophet. So when you obey Allah and you obey the Prophet, you'll be very kind and loving to your wife. Even the Prophet, he likes to play with the wife. He's not very serious. He likes to call the wife with beautiful name. He used to call Aisha, example. Ya Humaira. Oh, my wife with the reddish chick. You know? He, he likes to joke with them. Now, when we got married, we are very serious with our wife. And we are not helpful. Everything at home, we just leave it to the wife. The Prophet, MashaAllah, she is the best example. He's not a, a good leader only, but he's a good husband. He always helps in the domestic work. He's not like a big boss at home. He used to help the wife to do all the domestic work. But nowadays, a lot of men are not doing anything. You know? Even they don't have a job to do, they just don't care. Anything to do with domestic work, they just leave it to their wife. And it's very unjust. Now, for the woman, of course, you must obey your husband. But remember, the Prophet ﷺ has said, La ta'atul makhluq fi ma'asyatillah. You cannot obey even your husband in doing something against Allah's command and the saying of Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. That means obeying someone, even your own husband, there is a limit. It's not absolute, but obeying Allah is absolute. If your husband wants you to do something against Islam, against the teacher and the Prophet, you have all the right to disobey him. I'm telling the woman about her right. I'm also reminding fellow brothers, also myself, being a man, to be just to myself, and so that we can be just to our family. If not, then Allah is going to question you about your family. The Prophet said, Kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ulun an ra'iyati. Every one of you is a leader and you will be questioned by Allah about your leadership. In the house, the husband is a leader. He always says he's a boss. Good enough, we accept it. So you must be responsible yeah, towards your leadership. Show them good example. Show them that you are a good boss. Not just boss, but a good boss. Yeah. So the Prophet Wasallam always remind us. That the duty of the husband is to make sure that he give protection, comfort. He dress up the wife with the best dress, but the thing that do not burden him. 
and feed her with the best food and give her a good shelter. There is the response of a man. Not just get married and then after that it's finished. This is not the way the Prophet have taught us. The Islamic family is a very, very happy family. Islamic marriage is always a happy marriage. If everybody knows their rights and their duty, and also everybody knows the limit. What is the limit if your wife is not faithful to you or disobey you? There are ways for us to talk to the wife. And if you fail Islam, give us a better way. You can even call in your in-laws, your parents, and, and her parents to discuss and see what is the best way to solve the problem. But you must remember, you must learn how to respect your wife. Respect her as who she is. Because she has the haqqul karama. Yes, she has the basic right that Islam has provided for her. The right to be honored as a human, as your wife. To the extent the Prophet did say, the, best, the worst character of a man is a man who have a good time with the wife at night. The next day, he talked bad about the wife. In front of the public, in front of his friend. And about the secret that he has with the wife. This is not the right thing for us to do to our wife. Our wife her own dignity. She wants, she has the right to be respected. So if you want to have a happy family, if you want to be happy, you want your wife to make you happy, you make sure you make your wife happy too. And the best way is that, like I said earlier, that if there's any disagreement, dispute among yourself, you must sit down together. You must remember, you have agreed to share your life together. No more personal. Everything must be a company. You must share with her, discuss with her. Inshallah, we believe in the spirit of mushawara, the spirit of meeting, discussion. Because Allah wants us to keep on discussing among yourself to show that the wife feels that, you know, she, she's been honored, you know, she has certain right, so that inshallah, once she, the wife loves you, you don't have to worry. You can be sure you have a happy marriage. Because whatever is at home, she will take good care of it. When you are back, she will honor you, respect you, and love you, and comfort you. And when you are absent, she will make sure she will take care of your children and whatever property you left behind. Because normally, the wife is more faithful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the man. I don't say that. Always like that. Majority is like that. Because we got to accept the facts. They sacrifice more than us. They got to bear our children. They got to be at home all the time. Now we, we, we work as a man, we find money and provision. But how many hours we work outside? Eight hours, 10 hours? How many hours our wife work at home? A non-stop work. He worked from early in the morning until late night. While we fall asleep, she's still doing something. Before we wake up, she wake up earlier than us to prepare breakfast for us. See, their sacrifice is so great. Please honor them, respect them, love them. You will never regret. The best man is a man who followed the character of Prophet Muhammad wasallam, who loved his family and who always protect the family and who always sit down and discuss with the family whatever he thinks is good for the family. He did not use his, his veto, but he liked to share and get involved in the system of mushawara. That means discussion. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to develop the love within ourselves. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open the heart our family, especially husband and wife, and we hope that all of us will know how to honor and respect each other and be kind to each other. That is the purpose of a marriage. We want to get a family who is happy. Happy family always come from people who have the same faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, people who do things together as a group, as a jama'ah. Fellow brother and sister in Islam, please take care of our family. Take care of our wife. Take care of the children because they are your asset. 
a very important asset because the Prophet did say, if a person die, nothing can help you except three things. And among the three is, waladun saleh yadu'ulahu. The righteous children who will always ask Allah to forgive you. I remember one important hadith the Prophet did say, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the day of judgment will call one man. This is the hadith of one man. Who this man know that he is not a good man when he was alive in this world? He had been committing a lot of sin. He know that he'll go to Jahannam. He'll go to hell. So what happened is that in the day of judgment, Allah called this man and said to him, enter my paradise. This man was shocked. He thought Allah made a mistake. Are you sure that I can go to paradise? Because he know how bad he is. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, yes. Do you know why I forgive you? It's because of the prayer from your righteous children that you left behind. They put on praying for you. They ask Allah to forgive. They ask me to forgive you. Allah said, that's why I have forgiven you because of them. So you can go to paradise. You see how important for us to bring up our children yeah, in a happy environment so that they become righteous children. They like to be at home because at home there's always a lot of fun, a lot of happiness. But if you don't create that environment, we are worried, you will regret. Because if you fail to save your children, your children, your wife is going to bring you to Allah's cup. In the day of judgment, they will summon you. So we hope that you will not be summoned by your family. Fellow brother and sister in Islam, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us. We know we are weak, but we know that we can do a lot of things. The last thing that I like to remind the husband, you remember when you got married, the first thing that you must do is to honor the right of your wife. You must pay her a dowry, even a small amount. Now, dowry do not mean that you must spend thousand or million or rupees on, on her, but at least Islam is telling you she has right. Yeah, she has right to be paid. Hakul qasab. In Islam, they say hakul qasab. Your wife has the right to own something and to be paid. Like if she has property, you must remember her property belongs to her. You married her, you don't married her property because she has the right the right to own certain property that she inherit from her family so please remember this you now i've seen a lot of families sometimes they are always very unjust to their wife they want the best on themselves they treat their wife is like the, the wife is her her servant yeah they treat the wife like a prisoner that is very bad you know you must remember your children is very close to their mother if you fail to make her happy, then it is not easy for her to make the children happy. If you fail to respect your wife, then it's not easy for your wife to teach the children to respect and love their father. It links with each other. So if you want to have a happy marriage, happy family, you're going to do it together. And you're going to ask Allah to help you. Okay, at the end of the day, we can try our best. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give guidance to whom He pleased and whom asks for it. And we believe all of us want a good family. All of us want to be blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all of us want Allah's forgiveness. And if you want to do that, let us work together closely and show our kindness to our family. And please remember, kullukum ra'in. وَقُلُّكُمْ مَسْؤُولٌ أَنْ رَائِيَتِهِ Every one of us is a leader at least to ourselves and then to our immediate family and every leader will be questioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ about their leadership and no one can escape and please remember brother and sister the best gift yeah, that you can have from your wife is to have the righteous children and if you want to have a righteous children, don't forget to follow what Allah wants you to do. 
and what the Prophet have taught us. By doing that, we believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will shower His mercy on us, on our family, on our children, and protect us and our children from all the fitna that we are going to expose to in this world. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the azab al jahannam and the azab of kubur, the grave, and also the fitna al-mahya wal-mamad and the fitna al-masayhi al-dajjar. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha ila anta, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi Islam is a way of life, a complete way. Do you know what Islam says? It says that life's the greatest test. It says that life's a borrowed space, returned upon rest. A way of life, a way of life. A way of life, a way of life Islam is a way of life A complete way